Today I'm bringing you my follow-up review for the Tokina 11 to 20 and 50 to 135 cinema zooms. Welcome to the family, the long-awaited 25 to 75 millimeter Tokina cinema zoom. Now, if you're new to the channel, I'd like to take this time to introduce myself. My name is Joe and I own a video production company by the name of Driven Films, where I film primarily for the automotive industry. On this channel, I bring you honest and unbiased reviews of the camera gear that I get to use out in the field. If that's something you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Now, if you haven't already seen my video on the 11 and 20 and 50 to 135, you could watch it via the link in the description below. But for those of you who have seen the video, we're gonna quickly address the main concern that I had, as well as many other filmmakers had, and that's the missing focal lengths between the 50 to 135 and 11 and 20. Now, Tokina has heard our cries and they've listened to us and released the 25 to 75 which thankfully fills that gap in focal lengths. Now, even though the 25 to 75 does fill the gap between the 11 to 20 and 50 to 135 very nicely, it also works as a very nice standalone mid-range cinema zoom. While I had the lens in my possession, I ended up shooting two separate projects solely on the 25 to 75, seeing as it's a very versatile lens and has a ton of coverage. Now, speaking of coverage, the 25 to 75 has a 36 millimeter image circle, which covers a bit more than Super 35 sensors, or as Tokina calls it, Super 35 plus. All the footage that you're gonna be seeing throughout this video was shot on the Zcam E2F6, which is a full frame cinema camera. And I found that the coverage was indeed a bit larger than Super 35 plus. Sensor coverage is a very important thing to consider when comparing a cinema lens to a competing brand. For example, the DZO film Pictor Zoom 20 to 55 has a Super 35 image circle, meaning that it may or will vignette sooner in the focal length range than something like the Tokina lenses here, which are Super 35 plus. So it's something to keep in mind when you are picking out your lenses to pair with a large sensor camera like the Zcam E2 F6. When shooting uncropped 6K open gate on the E2 F6, the 25 to 75 did vignette at the lower end of the focal lengths, but once you punch in, the vignetting disappears. And when shooting at 4K DCI on a full frame sensor, you're gonna get a little bit of vignetting at the wider range, but once you start to punch in, the vignetting disappears. Now, of course, this lens is not made for a full frame sensor camera, but that's what I was shooting on this day, and I was very conscious of my framing the entire time I was shooting. So if you are shooting on a Super 35 sensor camera, this isn't going to be an issue. Just like its siblings, the 25 to 75 has an aperture range of T2.9 to T22. Now, that's not so fast. That's not very fast for a cinema lens. Obviously, the Vista here, this one goes up to T1.5 or down to T1.5, which makes it a very fast cinema lens, but we're talking about a massive price difference between the two lenses here. We're talking about a $6,000 prime versus a $5,000 cinema zoom. So what we're getting here is a pretty fast, for you know the most part, cinema zoom lens that optically performs really well and when paired with a camera like the E2F6, which is a low light monster, the lens performs extremely well in low light conditions. Now, if you guys have been watching this channel for a decent amount of time, you guys know that I'm a fan of zoom lenses. For the type of work I do, having a zoom lens is extremely versatile and it allows me to quickly capture what I need to capture without having to switch lenses. I film mostly motorsports and racing events and Again, having that zoom lens is absolutely vital to getting the job done. However, a lot of cinema zooms out there and a lot of photo zooms out there are not parfocal. Now, quick lesson here, what parfocal means is that once you change your focal length, once you zoom in or out, you have to reacquire focus if your lens is not parfocal. However, the Tokina line of lenses, they are 100% parfocal, meaning you do not have to reacquire focus every time you change your focal length. So again, that makes it very, very easy for run and gun shoots, for any time you're filming events, any time you are rapidly changing your focal lengths. It works even if you're doing narrative work and you're doing documentary work. Having a parfocal zoom lens is absolutely vital. Coming in at 173.5 millimeters in overall length, meaning it's just a bit longer than the 50 to 135, and coming in at just about four and a half pounds in PL mount configuration, 
The 25 to 75 can be considered a heavier cinema lens. However, I didn't find it to be too much of a problem, especially considering that I personally like a heavier camera package, especially when shooting off of a tripod or in handheld configurations. Now, as with the 11 to 20 and 50 to 135, the 25 to 75 has an 86 millimeter filter thread and a 95 millimeter outer diameter. Now, what that means is if you do want to use these lenses with a matte box of 114 millimeters, you're going to need to add a donut or a clamp so you can fit onto the 114 millimeter matte box. However, there are other matte boxes out there that have been introduced that are 95 millimeter outer diameter, so you're not going to need to use a step up ring or adapter ring. But again, you do have the option to use a screw on filter of 86 millimeter filter thread. Now, as you'd expect from Tokina, you do have the option of getting this lens in multiple different lens mount options, including PL, LPL, E mount, micro four thirds, and EF mount making it a very versatile option, considering that you could also change these lens mounts if you were to purchase the mounts separately from Tokina. Now, in terms of the focus iris and zoom rings, you get the same 300 degree focus throw that you get with the 11 to 20 and 50 to 135, making for a very smooth and accurate focus pull, whether you're solo operating or you are operating with a first AC. Now, many people may find that the 300 degree focus throw may be a bit too much for solo operation. However, when I did use the lens by myself and I shot an event on my own without an AC pulling focus for me, I found that 300 degrees wasn't too bad, even though I do prefer 270 degree focus throws when operating solo. Again, I didn't find 300 to be too bad. Now, in terms of the zoom ring, the zoom ring was absolutely precise and allowed for very smooth zooms. On the other hand, the iris ring is a bit on the stiff side, which is actually a bit of a personal preference for me, and I prefer that because I've used some cinema lenses that are on the market, which have very loose iris rings, which personally to me, I do not like whatsoever because it makes for a very sloppy and you know sudden abrupt iris change. With Tokina 25 to 75, you don't get that sloppy iris pull. It's very smooth and very precise each and every time. Now on to everyone's favorite part of these lens reviews, and that's the characteristics of this lens. The 25 to 75 fits in line with its siblings in the fact that it is a fairly sharp lens. It is a contemporary lens, so it is going to have some very nice image clarity, and it is gonna be a little bit more on the sharp side. However, it is not overly sharp like some of its competition. Now, unfortunately, I did not get to shoot with this lens at night, so you're not going to see a bokeh test. However, if you would like to see a test on the bokeh, I'm assuming that it is very much in line with the 11 to 20 here and the 50 to 135. So if you do wanna see a bokeh test, you can go down in the description below and watch my review on the 50 to 135 and 11 to 20. Now, while lens flaring is a personal preference, I found that the flaring on the 25 to 75 was fairly pleasing although a bit uncontrolled at times. As far as flare control goes, the 25 to 75 behaves just as you'd expect from a cinema zoom in this price range. Now finally, focus breathing. As most lens manufacturers do these days, Tokina advertises the 20 to 75 as having nearly zero focus breathing. And to be honest, they've definitely delivered on that promise. When shooting on the 20 to 75, I noticed exceptional breathing characteristics. So with that being said, my final thoughts on the 25 to 75 is that Tokina has hit a home run here. I am personally in love with the Tokina lenses. As you guys know, they didn't send me these lenses to keep. I had to buy them on my own, so they're not paying me to say any of this stuff. I just simply love the value that I get with these lenses. As you can see here, I purchased the Vista, I purchased the 11 to 20, and I will be purchasing the 50 to 135 and 25 to 75 at some point soon. Now, if you're gonna ask me who I personally feel that this lens is for, I would say that the 25 to 75 is the perfect lens for a solo operator or a small studio or a small team who doesn't have the budget for multiple higher end lenses. I feel that the 25 to 75 does punch above its weight class in terms of pricing, and it does provide a ton of coverage between 25 to 75 millimeters, making it a great option for anyone who needs to shoot wide on the go, you could shoot 35, you could shoot close with 50 up to 75. And of course you get the great optical clarity and it is a par focal lens, making it a huge, huge thumbs up from me. So 
That being said, guys, if you are looking to test this lens out for yourself, you could rent the 25 to 75 in PL or EF configurations, as well as 11 to 20 and 50 to 135 from lensrentals.com. Now be sure to use coupon code DRIVENFILMS15 when you rent from lensrentals.com so you can get 15% off your order. And of course, if you would like to purchase the 25 to 75, you could do so by clicking on the affiliate links down below to BNH or Adorama. And as always guys, I really appreciate anytime you guys use these affiliate links because it does truly help to support this channel. But above all, the best way to support this channel is by hitting the subscribe button, especially if you found this video to be entertaining and you don't wanna miss out on any future videos. Until next time, take care.